Welcome back. We're going to check out the Homicide Desk Free Roam, get some street crimes in, and also just sort of shoot the shit about the last Homicide arc. I feel like it warrants more discussion. Yeah. One question I have. Um, why was it called the Quarter Moon Murders? I actually don't understand that title at all. Well, because they called him the Werewolf Killer, but they didn't do a very good job of, like, seeding that. But, but yeah, that was his nickname. But why? Okay, so good, Werewolf. Why Quarter Moon? Oh, Quarter Moon. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I mean, maybe because that's the part of the lunar cycle. But no, that would be full moon. So yeah, I don't know. Often, yes. Huh. I guess even werewolf doesn't really make that much sense. Although I guess, you know, like coming to naked in the middle of nowhere, like the victims were, would be a sort of symptom of being a werewolf. Uh, I think they were just referring to the fact that he was a sort of brutal beast person. Yeah. More than that, he's a mythological werewolf, and he steals their silver. Ha! You've got a lead, <laughs> gentlemen. He did yeah. steal a lot of silver, though. No, well, that's and true. And rose gold and garnet and stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're off, off for a street crime here. Yeah. So there's been a ton of discussion in the thread about the last case, and we got some mixed... Oh, Sorry. That that right. I'm gonna awesome. keep talking though. What? I'm I'm gonna keep talking. You can answer that. You can take it on the thread here if you want. Yes. Yeah, well, my wife got <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> LAPD, stop what no doing. patting each other on the back. That is not okay in this city. Up for some of the rough stuff, are you? Yeah, this crime really caught me off guard. All we did was walk in, and then they started punching us. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's a great start. Um. So the thing, trying to, trying to load last case up into memory, um, I'm generally on board with the people who say they shouldn't have made him the Dahlia killer, like specifically. That's a bit of a stretch. Hmm. See, I liked that aspect of it. I don't know. I liked that they tried to ground it into some so some form of reality. But I think it would have worked even if they hadn't. It, uh, it would have worked to give it the context of the Dahlia case. So, you know, he's... The, the, it's okay for their... Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> that was some nice air, huh? Oh, my God. What's the name of this engine? I don't know. The Grand Theft Auto engine. No, it's it's the physics. Is, is this Does this use the same physics engine as GTA 4? I would imagine. I think they pulled a lot of things. I cannot remember GTA the 4. name of it. God damn it. This is so easy. Anyway, um, I liked when they were setting it up like, oh, it could be the same guy or it could be another serial killer. Like, it doesn't have to be literally the same person um, for it to get the historical grounding and the sort of extra atmosphere of the Dahlia case. And no, I, I disagree. I think that the Dahlia killing was a really cool shit. way to do it, but I think that they botched it they took a really good idea and didn't execute on it as well as they could have even with some of your suggestions the things that you said like you know having some of the killings be copycat killings and some be dahlia and uh i don't know a couple of you know having us bring him in for a second and then have him walk free i just feel like there were some things they could have done there were definitely weaknesses in the story but i think tying it to the black dahlia was not one of them that was one of the strengths for me. wait yeah yeah look it was harry's idea to boost the fuck full of this guy I was in the bar late talking, and we save it. You two idiots can say hello to Adrian for me. Oh God! Was Adrian his boss that was in that first case? Yeah, I was trying to remember. I mean, it's cool that they do the throwbacks like that, but yeah. Though I would not have recognized him uh, if he hadn't called him by name. I'm gonna go grab a hidden vehicle since we're already all the way out here. Sounds good. It's like a treasure hunt. Um. It, and th there's also a lot of general plot holes that weren't tied up well at all. Um, partly because we never got any real. I'm disappointed. We should have. We got sort of a speech from the serial killer, which is appropriate. He should have a, you know, maniacal monologue or whatever when we from the ground. But his was a little. 
too heavy on the mania and not enough on the actual relevance. Like, all he was talking about was bullshit standard lines about, like, you're, you and I, we're not so different. Oh my god, Matt. Um, we're not so <laughs> different, are we? Uh, instead of saying, here's what I did, and, you know, you're so stupid, and random philosophy. And here's the thing, you can do philosophical dialogues like that in game. Like, if, if the same sort of thing had been in, and we're bringing this up again, uh, Red Dead Redemption, it would have fit a little better, because that game constantly brought up in side conversations the ideas of just kind of general... Uh, the main characters thinking about the philosophy of what they're doing and the way the world works. But that's not something we had seated in here at all. So to have the... In the middle of a gunfight, the bad guy suddenly shouting all this random stuff didn't work for me as well. Yeah, I agree. I think that the, uh, the finale of that case... Not the finale case as a whole, but the very climax of that case was poorly done. He deserved a monologue. He deserved a good monologue. I mean, Particularly, what I want to know is why, what he, oh my god. Yeah, it's like a VW uh, bus, except it's not. No, it, wow. Oh, if there's any car buffs in the thread, I would love to know if this is an actual thing. Stout Scarab. The Stout Scarab. That is a crazy car. Cool. Yeah. Um, we never got to find out um, why no one, um, none of the people he set up ever protested? Like, he said, apparently he set up six different people to take the fall, and not a single one of them even mentioned, oh, that's not mine, or I was set up, or that evidence was planted, or I didn't do it, even. Well, okay, so first of all, that's not entirely true. They all did deny their crime. That's true, first. I guess. Um, and I do agree that, you know, if I were in that situation, I would have definitely used the phrase set up, which none of them did. So that's probably just a narrative reason for that. But uh, he did, the killer did do a good job of selecting victims that were, you know, damaged goods enough, neurotic enough, or, or just down on their luck enough that they weren't really going to protest as much. The, the example that comes to mind is the hobo. Like, that was a perfect man to frame for that crime. Yeah, that was, but other stuff, and... The like, husbands, whenever they framed the husbands, those ones are bad. Yeah, oh, the, the one that really, really sticks out in my mind, there's two. One of them is the guy from the very first case, the... Mexican guy who went home from the bar right. with Celine Henry and the fruit seller, Clem, whatever his name is. Like, they just ran. They saw police and ran. And Clem had been talking to you. Like, so. What? Oh, this is. Uh, I found a, a new landmark. We haven't actually seen that in our LP yet because even though I'm on a new playthrough, they still count all the old landmarks as, ah. as having been found. But when you find something new, you can hold down the circle, it'll give you a little oh, cool that's view cool. of it this time. Um, okay, so like the fruit cell. You had you shown up, you kind of establish, yeah, you're selling alcohol and it's not really legal. We're just gonna take a look around. So here's the thing. If he knew there was evidence in the back room against him, the, the bloody knife and all that stuff. Why didn't he run the instant you went inside? Or destroy, or try and destroy the evidence. Yeah. Or even and, and try he, and hide it. And if he didn't know, why did he run the instant he stepped inside and saw you? It's not like the evidence was just out in the open. or Like, wouldn't your reaction at that point be something like, um, what the hell is that? Like, surprise. Like, yeah. he's clearly okay with the level of crime he's committed. Officer. What? It just, it doesn't work. I don't understand the psychology there. So just an update on the video. We're ditching that car because although it looks really cool, it's super unfun to drive. Oh. Now we're trying to fast travel, but unfortunately I ditched my partner at the garage, which I didn't realize. And I cannot fast travel without a partner. I am learning the hard way. Oh dear. So... So we're driving to this next one. Well, he'll magically teleport when you get to the next case, right? Yes. 
Okay. No, but with regards to the fruit seller, it's obvious that he's guilty of something. I mean, we're not in Prohibition, so I don't really necessarily buy the alcohol angle, but maybe he's, like, selling liquor after hours or yeah, doesn't well, have a license. Yeah, I, I assume he's selling liquor without a license. But that seems like pretty pretty small fry to be afraid yeah. of the police. But whatever. So, but uh, that one makes a little bit more sense to me because once you bring him in, once you charge him and bring him in and, and everything, then he's going to want to lawyer up, you know? Like, he's going to yeah. want to be quiet about the whole thing. And maybe in that situation, if you start saying things like, I've been framed, it's a setup, then you're just like, you know, you sound like a crazy person, you're not helping your case. I could almost buy that one, because he had some actual crimes that he was guilty of. The yes. fella who was set up with no crimes against him whatsoever, or whenever it's the husband that we end up putting away for it, those scenarios just baffle me why they don't try and fight more. Yeah, well, the, the thing about the fruit seller is the timing of when he ran doesn't make sense. I mean, I guess he could have thought he would that they you wouldn't find the back room, which is where the... But then why didn't he happening. run the instant you went that into the back to the room? The building, sir. Someone's gonna have to climb uh, up and take him well, out. he ran shortly well, after that. No, he well, didn't. Yeah, you he were in there for a like while. That. He didn't run until he walked in, sort of saw what you were doing, and then left. Yeah, that's true. That's a subtle point to uh, fixate on, but I agree, it is inaccurate. Yeah. Well, I, I acknowledge that that point... What? What? I thought I was going up these stairs, but apparently I'm supposed to shimmy up the wall. I will quickly realize. Oh, the, the pipe there, okay. Um, like, the thing felt wrong, and I'm just trying to identify what about it felt wrong specifically. Yep. I don't know. That, that That's just... You needed to address that point. It's not okay to... <laughs> I can't look up. Cole You're secretly is playing John McCain. Above that viewpoint. Because like cops? cops like killing you. So I want to oh point out that I shot that I shot each of them three times in the chest, and neither one of them died. Just want to point that out. Okay. And now, now we can carry on. I thought that was an unfair failure on my part. All right. Um, I agree with you that some of the suspects, you know, didn't add up the, the things leading up to it, but I will say, if they had taken some of your advice on that finale, given the guy a satisfying monologue, brought him in on, you know, some charges and, and then been forced to let him go, pay. I think it would have been good call. enough that we would have forgiven all of the other yeah. uh, shortcomings and we wouldn't be here discussing it. Because I really do think they were close to having a very compelling story. Here, I'm finally going into oh my God. somebody suggested in the thread. Tommy gun. Yeah, this is such an unpromoted feature. Like, you could play the whole game. In fact, I did without realizing that's there. And look how much better off I am for the... I'm shotgun sniping, by the way. That's a thing. Yeah, People do you that. can do that. That's a thing. <laughs> Shotguns are frequently accurate over 50 yards. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, for all I know, they might actually be in reality. I'm just expecting video game shotgun physics. So, it seems weird. Presumably, in real life, some of the pellets are going to get there. Yeah, it's just such a small percentage of it. It's probably, as, you know, much less lethal. Well, that went better. From a gameplay perspective, certainly. Uh, yeah. I'm troubled by, you like killing cops? Boom. <laughs> Different times. Yes, they were. They hadn't yet invented shooting to disarm. I love that little vignette that we've seen. The thing I love about it is the animators and the artists, they programmed Cole's stare and his hand movements and, you know, the coroner. They programmed all of that once. And then they just copy pasted it and lifted it from one location to another, to another, to another. So that at the end of every street crime, you get the exact same, you know, second to second animations playing out. It's just in a different location and you can read different things into his facial expressions. <laughs> I guess. I I was noticing the same thing with the way he puts down his gun at the end of a shootout. Exactly. Okay, the next corner, exactly. They got some mileage out of that animation for sure. Yeah. So it's cool driving around the city at night. They don't do enough nighttime cases in LA really, anymore, I think. It, no is there a day night cycle in free roam? Or there is, is it just yeah. Nighttime? It is nighttime now, and there is a day-night cycle. I've noticed. I noticed that in the last one. Okay. 
I mean, I guess there obviously is, because there is in the game, too, which just most well, cases only take a few hours of game time, unless you're in a hedge maze. Yeah. And yet we still are required to have daily reports in two cases so far. Yep. You, out of curiosity, why did you stop and wait for that light? Oh, I was listening to the radio dispatch. Oh, okay. Suddenly went cool. Hit the sidewalk, all you! Is this the same bowling alley? Oh, shit. Yep. We got cops. Huh. Of course you got cops. It's a cop bowling alley. That's what it's famous for. Benny, get your nose. You can take it. You can take that bench. I'm trying to go in the trunk again because I learned this cool new trick, but then I realized that That's not a police car, car, is it? No. Wouldn't it be cool if there were just weapons randomly in every trunk of every car? St. Switzerland. It's not in this car either. I don't know. Oh well, I tried. You know that Switzerland has the highest um, gun ownership per capita rating of like any country in the world? I did not. How's their homicide? Uh, very low. The reason being that like every adult or something is officially a member of the militia and is issued a gun. Which is, oh, wow. like, kept in a locked case in their house or something like that. So everyone has at le least one or something. Now, are we going to make a bargain or what? Put the weapon down now. Yep. So that happened. Yeah, I see that. I spent a couple weeks, a little while back, watching QI. Not familiar. It's a British... Okay, do you know, wait, wait, don't tell me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, imagine that, except for the host is Stephen Fry, and every single panelist is a stand-up comedian. Oh, okay. And the goal, the stated goal is to be interesting rather than right. <laughs> That's clever. So and you get points. So boring, wrong point. answers are, like, they play the a word. howler and loud sirens and you lose points and making a funny and appropriate answer even if it's not technically correct will earn you points so i don't know if you followed this last time last time i shot the bowling guy and then the guy oh. behind the counter so you this just totally bypassed the, the, the hostage totally bypassed the hostage cool kind of funny anyway so you kind of makes me wonder how much of these street crimes i'm missing just by killing the guy in the wrong order <laughs> 11K calling KGPL. Anyway. We're code QI, code you code say. Code I'll check it out. Yeah, it's all on YouTube because I gather it has never been released in the States at all. It may not all legally be on YouTube, but it's all there. Um, and it's both very consistently funny and consistently interesting. Sweet. It's very, very well done. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. <sighs> Nice to have a partner again, so that I can teleport. Hooray! So I see from your YouTube playlist that you've been getting into Diablo 3. Oh yeah, dude, so good. Cool. We just got a copy, like, as a birthday present, and hopefully within a month or so we'll have a computer that can play it. <laughs> 11K, go ahead. Yeah, I put my whole playthrough up on, on the channel. Well, I'm not so going to watch it, with the, uh, General impressions? Once our viewers are finished with the uh, LP, they can check that one out, too. No, it was, uh, it was really fun. I went to a LAN party, and we beat the entire game in one sitting, 14 hours, four of us, four computers in the living room facing each other. I think I got a pretty different experience than somebody who was playing, you know, on their own with VoIP mm -hmm. or whatever. Really fun, though. Oh, man. Unnecessary. Yep, he's yep. dead. <laughs> um, I will say it's very faithful to the uh, to Diablo 2, and uh, if you like Diablo 2, you're just going to really like it. Okay. Well, we, my wife has actually started replaying 2 because she's impatient to be able to actually <laughs> play 3. So, we're looking forward to it, but it's worth the wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was skeptical of the new talent system uh, that they put in. You know, basically, there's no consequence to your specking. You can respec with just a 30-second cooldown. Oh, no, um, that's perfect. Yeah, but there's actually a tremendous amount of complexity in that new system. So even though it's simpler in some regards, it's more complex in other regards. Huh. And it 
it still feels uh it doesn't penalize yeah, you for making a mistake that. once it doesn't but it adds in uh, additional complexity so that even though you can reconfigure at any time you still need to spend a lot of brain power you know sure. what's the right spec for this boss what's the right spec for this gold mob that i'm trying to fight whatever cool yeah it's, it's interesting um, storyline's pretty good um I don't know. Not as compelling as a StarCraft storyline to me, but that's not why you yeah, play. Yeah, I can't do RTS at all. Um, did you ever play Diablo 2 with Eastern Sun? I didn't, but I hear it is excellent. Yeah, if you ever randomly feel compelled to go back, um, it modded in any time respecting for Diablo 2. And it's amazing how much more fun that makes the game, so... I'm looking forward to that being actually a part of it. What's up? Um, I don't even remember what I was going to say when I started that sentence. What's up? Skybirds. Yeah, I had another Numerous question, things. but you apparently it wasn't important. Can you drive to this one? Fourth and final street crime here. Kind of a letdown. There were like something like 10 or 11 street crimes at the yeah. last death. Well, the, the, traffic one. the one that you did in like the first or second case, just randomly out driving around, was really cool. It's too bad none of these have matched up. Like, that was a, a, a set piece crime, and I thought they were going to move more towards do you, having Do you the, remember the context of that one? It was the hold-up thing where you ran and chased them down into the train tunnels. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was really like, cool. It, that was a, just a small little thing with a really cool set piece, Reveal. basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was hoping that the rest of them would be similarly tiny little flashes of creativity or whatever. So, some of them stick out in my mind, like... Uh, Wait, this is well, the same... This is that one, I thought... Tables are turned now, haven't they, boys? We're just redoing Yeah, I this. don't know. Hey, look, I don't know why this one is flagged as homicide, was this... Didn't we no, it was homicide. It was in the first or second... It was in the Muller case, the second one. No, that's right. Feels like so long ago. Yeah, but there were only four side cases in all of homicide. When you do free roam, it asks you to re replay all of them. Huh, so question. Um, was there no DLC for homicide? There wasn't, but there are two pieces of DLC in Vice, which we're about to start. So uh, Vice started out as just three cases, and it's now going to be five cases. So there's a lot more of the Vice story that we're going to be experiencing as DLC. Great. Uh, that's That was also... No, no, Traffic was four, and then freaking six. Yep. Oh, Rusty and his suit. But the Homicide arc and then the final desk, which I won't reveal what it is, uh, both had... None or no, the final desk had one piece of DLC, which is very inconsequential. But I think they were most proud of, if I'm if I'm assuming here, they're most proud of their homicide story and their final story, or their final desk story, so they didn't modify those too much with the DLC. The traffic desk is an obvious place for some cases. Sure. And the vice desk I think was although I found the story very compelling, I think a lot of people in the thread agree it's uh it's looser. It's not a, a narrative arc in the same way that this one is. Well, I'm prepared to hate our partner the entire time. <laughs> yeah, how did you think, uh, how did this guy warm up? Did he warm up for you? I remember when we first traded out our traffic he's, partner. For he's still side. nowhere near as good as Bukowski. Bukowski was awesome. Um, Bukowski you warmed up on. Yeah, Bukowski was great. Like, he was a good guy that was fun to listen to. Rusty's... I really want to jack this cab. Pay no attention to me, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny how I'm like, I'm almost fast enough to jack it, but I can't. Come on. This is fascinating. Um, you could do it. Rusty just never, I don't know, he, he never really became a... Mm, I'm trying to think of how to say this. Like, he's clearly not a bad person, um, or a bad detective, but... <laughs> <laughs> I got it! I got the cab. The cab is mine. You know the way. You can drive. I thought, of course, I have no location, so I can't even. I would throw all that trouble to jack the cab, and now there's no free drives left. So I'm like, well, where am I going? <laughs> so at this point i'm thinking um maybe i need to be in a police vehicle to see the street crimes you know that's 
That's sort of what's going through my brain right now. So I say, let's just free roam in this taxi for a while until we see a cop car and jack that. Uh, God damn it. I did all this work to get this LAPD, car. I'm going to freaking drive it. Uh-huh. That's, that's good, Matt. You can't do this! Rusty's an accessory. <laughs> yeah, and then I found five dollars. Story, right? <laughs> In your broken ankle? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was that was wonderful. Wait, so there, oh, I did just take a there taxi. aren't any we more just taxi. We're just doing this video for another two minutes. Well, I just took the taxi to uh, a hidden vehicle location because what the hell? Okay. I don't. I didn't feel like this was a satisfying enough video. It has to hit yeah, at least get close to thirty minutes. I don't know. The people are gonna feel let down if we don't drag this out a little bit. Let's check out this uh, hidden vehicle. What's behind door number one? Sleek looking. Okay, so Rusty, um, I guess my problem is he's just dumb. Like Bukowski was <laughs> clever and was really sparring with Cole. Rusty is just kind of dumb, and he's not and very and vulgar and what? boring. Yeah, he's just not very fun to listen to. I guess uh, he, he's not a terrible character. Like he's not necessarily a bad guy, but I didn't enjoy the banter nearly as much. It was. I don't know. I mean, in examples, for instance, it Cole recognized the Shelley poem. That's pretty good. That's that's some good knowledge. But Rusty, like, what's an allegory? I mean, different yeah. times maybe. But was that really that unknown in the nineteen uh, as a, a word in the nineteen forties? Yeah. Like right. knowing what an allegory is is not a reason to call someone an egghead. I don't know. He wasn't like anti-intellectual. Just kind of, eh. He didn't grow on me nearly as much. Yep. But I already hate Ray Earl, so hey. Yeah, that'll be interesting, because you, you started neutral on uh, Bartowski and came to like him. You started neutral negative on this guy, and you it basically stayed there. Neutral the positive. Now you're uh, now you're starting very negative on Ray Earl. That is a, a very nice car. Oh yeah, it's morning now, so yeah, time cycles work. Actually, I'm, all right, I'm gonna hop in this car and check real quick if there's any more street crimes. Cool. Actually, I really liked the lighting change Phelps, around sunrise. I was noticing it as it was happening. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's definitely nothing. I don't know why I thought being in a police car would help out. I guess I'm just a little surprised that so many cases, so few street crimes. Yeah. For this test. Well, but that does it. I guess uh, I just so didn't. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't want to put in too many crimes to break up the flow. I guess. Okay, those are some street crimes. Good stuff. Well, I'm excited to uh, get started on advice with you. I think yeah, you're let's, like let's jump straight into that. Perfect.